Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification where we are in Chapter 1 talking about managing the test activities and as a part of it we are in 1.2 talking about the context of testing and today we shall be looking at the last segment of this sub-segment that is 1.2.7 that is test management activities to plan, monitor and control to understand further that what could be preparatory works which we can do for better planning, better monitoring, and better control in the life cycle. As a part of our fundamentals, we have indeed discussed that there are different set of activities which do take place as a part of planning, monitoring, and control. However, having the list of activities may not certainly give us the way how they should be actually done. Like what are the key important things to be taken care of in order to make them effective? Performing an activity is always okay, but making them effective is going to play a vital role. And that's where a test manager comes with a vital contribution to make sure that whatever they plan, whatever they decide for monitoring, and what could be their control actions should also be effective when and where we implement them. And that is where this particular section will talk about that what exactly are those activities or test manager should be responsible for when it comes to the plan, monitor, and control. To get started with, let's get into the very first part of it, that is test planning. But before that, a quick context. Of course, effective test management is the uh, cornerstone of any successful testing effort, encompassing a wide range of activities that necessitates uh, the careful planning, vigilant monitoring, and strategic control. The test manager play a pivotal role in ensuring that the test process is not only effective and efficient, but also tailored to unique demands of the project at hand. So again, every single project is unique in its own sense. We do have a principle to dedicate that the testing is context dependent. And of course, your product, your project, your organization, your domain may have a lot of influences to define that. Now, indeed, a test manager should be in such a way that they should understand the characteristics and all these standards and influencing factors to be taken into account to define the best plan possible at the same time how to do this more effectively in terms of monitoring and control. To talk about the first one we have the planning here. So of course when it comes to just planning some of the key major activities to be performed are the comprehensive scope definition, the risk assessment and mitigation plan and of course resource allocation strategy. Now, of course, when it comes to the first parameter, the scope definition should be comprehensive enough. A test plan must be meticulously crafted, incorporated, uh, inc incorporating a thorough definition of scope. This includes identifying all functional and non-functional requirements to ensure complete test coverage. It also involves considering the implications of both black and white testing uh, methodologies, ensuring that the test cases developed are capable of validating the system and the test for all angles. Indeed, uh, making it very simple to understand, in our past tutorial also we told you that when it comes to doing the proper management, it is just not about considering some of the common activities or common levels which we conduct. It is indeed important for us to plan for all the other things which are basically a part of our scope. So a manager should be very much careful with what is coming into the scope of testing team and then look forward to plan for every single thing, be it about the white box testing, black box testing, uh, functional testing, non-functional testing, and make sure that the test cases which are being created are making sure that these requirements are being covered or are they relevant enough to perform these activities. And again, we can just go on, continue talking about these things that how exactly the test cases can be made effective. It's not necessary that if you run 100 test cases and if they pass, it does not mean that you don't have any defect in your life cycle or in your particular product. So passing 100% test cases does not really mean the test cases are efficient. It may be possible that test cases need a little improvement to add more value. So test managers should grow suspicious when things are not happening as expected. And for that, the journey starts right with proper planning. So include every single detail which could guide your team well and can be documented in a way that becomes a measurable criteria at any point of time. The second important thing here to understand is, of course, the risk assessment and mitigation plan. Integral to the test plan is the robust risk management framework. The test managers must undertake a detailed risk analysis, pinpointing potential vulnerabilities and challenging that could impact both the project workflow and the end product as well. 
The development of mitigation strategies is crucial, involving primitive planning to circumvent or minimize these risks effectively. Now, conducting risk analysis within the project is a common activity, but again, making sure that the risk identification plays a vital role, the risk has assessed every single detail, and have an effective mitigation plan in action, which would make more sense at any point of time. This should be in a written in a way that should address or be proportionate to that of the required amount of testing and should help you mitigate the identified risk. So again, just doing testing may not be of great help, but defining the things appropriately to that of the risk identified could have a great plan to accomplish the goals of risk management. And the third important thing which we are talking about is resource allocation strategy. Of course, resource planning is another critical element. This extends beyond mere allocation to defining the structure of the team, del delineating the roles and establishing communication protocols in environments where the teams are distributed as with on-site, off-site models. This becomes especially significant to maintain a synchrony and ensure seamless collaboration. So resource allocation, quite often we think that we are only responsible for finding the people to get the job done. But we should further deep dive here to understand getting the right skill could be another important challenge. Having the balance between the skills, what we have, how many manual testers, how many automation testers, then even in manual and automation, what kind of expertise is required, how many freshers are we looking at, how many middle uh, scale experienced people are looking, and then how many experienced, pretty experienced, like seven, eight, 10 years of experienced people are required to drive the show. And indeed, uh, when it comes to these uh, uh, team creation, we just don't look forward to have people who are uh, just doing the job, right? We are looking forward to have the people who might be responsible to deliver the goals and expectations of the system. And these people are certainly uh, going to do the job what you're required to perform at any point of time. And uh, certainly these people can sometime not be in the same location. They may be distributed. So you may have to set up the right collaboration tools or right way of communicating uh, among them because until unless they have a good communication, good collaboration, a little bit data will be lost and maybe we are not synchronized to each other. So when we find the team accordingly, we look forward to have set up the right collaboration methods so that the team can do the needful, right? So test manager plays a really vital role in considering every single factor, every single detail as a part of planning to be determined in a way that acts like a plan, not just for the name that it's a plan, right? So let's move on to the next segment. The next segment we are talking about is monitoring. Of course, as we all understand, monitoring is more about keeping an eye on the progress of the project and indeed it results into uh, monitoring the ongoing activities, give some statistics which reflects how the progress is happening. And based on that data, we can see if we are on track or getting deviated from the expectations. So what exactly more we can do when it comes to monitoring? So of course, in monitoring, execution oversight, tool and environment optimization, development, collaboration are the three major factors which we can look at. So first one is, of course, execution oversight. So monitoring plays a central role in the test management process. It involves a continual review of the test execution against the established plan, tracking the progress of the test cases and managing any defects that arise, adjusting test priorities based on risk assessments and real-time development ensures that testing remains focused and aligned with the most critical areas. Execution oversights, in simple words, will just talk about all those events which take place as a part of the life cycle. I should be consistently monitoring as a test manager the how the work is going on. And if I correlate this to key activities of the testing life cycle, that is execution, I'm more worried about the executions which are taking place, how many of them are done, how these test executions are really resulting into value add to the business, and at the same time, is this still aligned? Because maybe, you know, you could have done some prioritization initially in the life cycle, but over a period of time, there might be a lot of things which have changed. And as thing unfolds, as information gets gathered further, like in more deep dive, we look forward to revise the prioritization. And indeed, there are many such activities which we can call them as control actions and which we'll talk in the next. But for now, just understand that the way you monitor, the control actions can be more relevant. The next important thing here to talk about is tool and environment optimization. 
The judicious selection and usage of test tools and environments are crucial for supporting the test strategy. Continuous monitoring ensures that they are effectively integrated within the CI or CD pipeline, facilitating continuous testing and immediate feedback loops that are vital uh, for the agile development process. So tool and environment optimization simply means the need of the various tools and the environment to support them should all be well understood and consistently tracked as well. Because at any point of time, you may realize that this tool is not doing the needful what you are really expecting from that particular software. Or maybe the environment is not available and due to that your team is getting delayed or maybe the environment is getting down every single moment then we look forward to find out the best ways to do that and not only that the monitoring parameters which are matrices are not supposed to be calculated manually so you may have tools which will supply you that information and those matrices are supposed to be configured in a way that they can result into the dashboards or those reporting factors which you really need to measure from time to time so indeed, the tools are just not reflecting the test management or automation. We even talk about those other tools which just builds and binds things together to make things happen, right? The third element here to talk about is, of course, the development collaboration. Of course, during the entire monitoring phase, that is the life cycle, maintaining a close working relationship with the development team is very much essential for the successful test outcomes. This collaboration should support a comprehensive approach to testing, leveraging insights from both white box and black box perspective to primitively uh, address the potential issues. So I think this is very clear to everyone here that uh, during the entire life cycle of testing, we look forward to have better and very close collaboration with that of the developers. The reason is we'll supply the information to them. We consistently collect status update from them. When the defects are resolved, we look forward to do retesting. Retesting can pass or fail, like confirmation testing, pass or fail. If in case it passes, we conduct regressions. We look forward to what impacts it can have and accordingly perform the regression test suite. Or in, in case the defects still remain there, we again collaborate to let the development team know that things are not yet done. So point being made is for every single activity, you will have something to share with the development team to supply the information or get the things done on time. So put together, monitoring focuses on different things which we should be worried about as a test manager and consistently look forward to that. Finally, to add here, the third segment which you're talking about is control. Of course, control is being defined as the most important part of the life cycle. When you monitor, you observe certain deviations and then for these deviations, we need to take appropriate control actions. If app control actions are not relevant or appropriate, certainly it may not be of any use. And that's where the appropriate control action would make a lot of sense. So being a test manager, we talk about adaptive process management and quality gate management, where adaptive process management says, Test control is about dynamically adjusting the testing process to response to new insights, challenges, and evolving project dynamics. It requires a test manager to be responsive and flexible, capable of implementing changes to the testing approach and that reflect the current state of project. Whereas quality gate management, a structured approach to quality gate management is fundamental. This includes defining what constitutes a quality gate within the testing life cycle and making informed decision about the progression of the testing phase, which is instrumental in maintaining the product integrity. So two important things here, which we are talking about, of course, is very clear. One, we have to be very, very appropriate to those of the uh, control actions. And indeed, it's just not that the flaw which happens from your plan, there might be always something new which is appearing in your project as the project unfolds. You may have change requests, you may have greater insights or deeper dive to those knowledges which may not be available initially in the life cycle. And due to these new information, you may require to do necessary changes into your actions and our plans. So that's where we are supposed to take the appropriate control actions as it adapts to. Whereas the quality gate is basically to refer to uh, that what kind of measurements we do over a period of time, letting everyone know about it, how the testing is progressing, that we have achieved so much of coverage, we have conducted these many executions, these are the defects which are open currently and need support from this person or maybe this team, or this is where we need to have a little bit more effort 
This is where we need to improve a little bit. So anything which defines how exactly the quality is being defined in the product could be, again, one of the parameters. However, the quality gate measurements would let us know that what control actions needs to be taken if in case we are not on the schedule or not on the track with respect to the test activities. So amendments, changes, and those corrective actions which we take to overcome the deviations with respect to the lifeline or life cycle we talk about as control actions. Finally, to conclude, of course, by focusing on these specific activities within planning, monitoring, and test control, the test manager can ensure that the test process will, is well-defined, adaptable to project changes and results in a product that meets both the project requirements and even the stakeholder expectations. So that keeps it very to the point and well understanding of how the test manager manages the planning, monitoring and control. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.